Classroom education is changing forever. I sat down with Anthony Risk, co-founder of Zebu Mobile, who make educational games for toddlers. Because of the massive adoption of smartphones and tablets, Anthony believes we are at the tipping point. Okay, so Anthony, what are you seeing out there today that is working in this, in this space and, and helping maybe push uh, toddlers um, a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more uh, you know, early childhood development? Right. So the, the big thing is keeping toddlers engaged. So anything that keeps the toddler engaged and is, has some educational value will, will work in some way. And so the question about keeping toddlers engaged, it's uh, immediate feedback, interactive, anything interactive. Sounds. Sounds. Sounds are big. Animation Vibrations, big. yeah. Even you know, certain sounds, like yeah. little boys love uh, racing cars. Yeah. Uh, some little girls love racing car sounds and things like that, too. Yeah. Uh, you know, flowers, bright colors, all kinds of things. So immediate response is one of the things that this, uh, this platform allows you to do. Yeah, immediate, that's exactly it. Immediate response, um, so that you know right away if you're doing something right or if you're doing something wrong and you get an immediate reward. You've got a short window of time to be able to uh, you know, entertain or educate or right. edutain children with these devices. Right. Oftentimes it's in, it's in a lineup in a grocery store. How do you, you've got to create a product that, uh, that does one thing and one thing very well or do you try to do a little bit more uh, of a complicated uh, application? It has to be simple. Uh, so either one product that does one thing very simply very well yeah. or a product that has multiple different game modes and each game mode is separate and simple. But one thing One thing, at a simple, time. grabs the toddler's attention immediately. It's the yeah. same thing, you know, over and over again. Slight variations maybe, but they've got to get into it right away. It has to be simple, it has to be engaging Good. from the first second. And it doesn't overwhelm, right? And it doesn't overwhelm. Sim them. Simple simple to use. And simple all that. yeah. So they, they any um, and, and almost very flexible too. So almost anything that they do gives them some kind of reaction. Because okay. the toddler will you have no idea how they're gonna interact with these things. No, you don't, and they might throw it. And that's, that's exactly what's gonna yeah. happen. So what do you what do you see that's coming down? I, I mean if you just kind of project yourself a couple of years, I mean we both have young children, uh, they're learning differently today uh, than than we were learning when we were that age. Uh, I think the touch screen is a big thing. So multi touch like on an iPad device, it's much more natural for a kid to learn that way and you can do a lot more things with that than you can with the traditional keyboard mouse, which yeah. is sort of you know, jamming a kid's natural instinct to touch everything into like, you know, typing on a keyboard and moving a mouse around. So yeah. uh, touch and multi-touch is going to be a big thing no matter, no matter what, uh, what kind of device it's on. Yeah. And I think some sort, of, uh, some sort of online component where parents can keep track of the kid's progress, where maybe teachers can tie into the lesson plans, so that it all becomes one, you know, from school to home, everyone is learning the same thing. And, and what do you think about kind of the social implications of, of, of doing this, uh, of actually using these devices. So if I'm, a, if I'm a child, if I'm two or three years old or even younger, mm -hmm. um, do you think that it's going to have an impact on the way my mind actually works, you know, 20 years from now? Do you think that it's going to influence the way that I actually learn as a result of using these tools? I, um, I think it will. I think it's in a positive way. I think learning via interaction and experimentation is much more natural than learning via just listening or passively <laughs> absorbing information. And see, okay. hand, of course, the one some social contact. Well, that's always so, good, right? Exactly, that's it. So uh, I, I think that uh, it's going to take time away probably from more passive means of media consumption. So it's not going to take time away as much from kids playing together as much as from kids watching TV. And I don't think that's a bad thing. No, and do you think that maybe this would be an actually, uh, uh, you know, an appealing way for, to, for, for kids to learn as opposed to being told what to do? This is something that they can embrace and yeah. learn on their own, like yeah. self-development? And, and I think that's great because, you know, once you, once you leave school, most of the learning that you, you do is experimentation, right? You know, you start a company like I did, right? And you learn by experimentation, you make sure. a bunch of mistakes. You know, we poke part of the company and see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Same idea, but it's just, it's just taken. I think this is a much more natural way of learning. I think it'll be a, a huge benefit for people to be learning this way. So let's talk about the other side of this. Is there a negative social aspect to, uh, you know, handing a child this device and, and letting them wander off? Uh, you know, do you think that it, it kind of lends to attention deficit disorder? Do you think that, uh, you know, uh, just read a recent report about uh, children in school not being able to pay attention. They've banned cell phones in, in uh, high schools and grade schools now inside of the classroom. What, what do you think that, do you think that this will contribute to that? Have a negative impact or do you think that it's going to uh, uh, just maintain or increase the learning capabilities of these children? Well, I think there, there are a couple of things. So uh, worrying about kids being antisocial because they're spending all their time interacting with this instead of other kids. Uh, 
it's something to be concerned about, but it's something that as a society we've dealt with for the past, you know, in several decades with television. So kids sit in front of a television for hours at a time sometimes. But is this, is this, because you see kids today mm -hmm. uh, texting, right? Some of these guys doing 15 or 20,000 texts, uh, you know, in a month. Do you think that getting them using this at an early age will just contribute to that? Do you think that it's going to be 50,000 texts and no language at that point? I, uh, it's an interesting question. <laughs> I, no, I don't think so. I mean, this is not, you know, it's addictive. It's not, uh, it's not going to consume them. Uh, okay. It'll come at the expense, and we're already seeing it with the younger generation, come at the expense of, of television, yeah. um, of passive media, right, where you're just sitting and watching. Do you think that they'll be more, uh, you know, introverted, uh, isolated as a result of, of doing this? I think that uh, they'll be different. They'll interact differently socially. We're already seeing this with the, with the net gener you know, the, the yeah. generation that grew up with the internet. They're more comfortable, or at least as comfortable, interacting online as in person. Yep. But kids will be kids. They'll always interact, you know, <laughs> with each other in person. Yeah. Um, but yeah, some negative impacts, and probably it'll it'll affect their uh, their attention span, their ability to focus on certain types of tasks for long periods of time. You know, yep. passive tasks where they're not really interacting. Yep. Um, although Hannah is still really interested in rocks and being <laughs> <outdoors>. <laughs> It's good. <laughs> Much more so than the iPad. Uh, but uh, but kids are going to get hold of this stuff anyway. This is the kind of world that we live in. So if you if you're hand in hand with your kid teaching them about this from a young age they'll they'll learn setting limits saying okay this is fine to play with in short periods of time then you've got to go do something else you got to go play outside you got to run around yeah. um, it's better that they learn that from a young age than that their first exposure to this is when they're nine or ten years old and as a bunch of peers and they're like look at this and the kids like i've never seen this before <laughs> and you know. then it's then it just opens up the floodgates exactly yeah. exactly so at what age uh, do you start handing devices over to, to children? I mean, everybody in high school and grade school seems to carry them around. They're so cheap these days, comparatively. Uh, how far down does that go, and, and what are the implications of that? Right. So I, I don't think that toddlers will be carrying around cell phones um, in, at any In their time. current form, right? In their current form. I think that they, they, will, be, they will have some device. Yeah. I don't think it'll be like a, a cell network-enabled device, maybe not even a network device. Yeah. It'll be something like an iPad, probably a little bit more rugged than you know a nine-inch pane of glass, but um, something like that. But I think that the younger and younger kids will, will have those kinds of devices now. Whether they carry them around all the time, what the rules are for having them in the classroom, I don't know. I mean, I do know that in, in some classrooms, you know, uh, so kids with learning disabilities have been using technology for ages, and there are some classrooms where half the kids will have a laptop or something like that. Uh, this, you know, an a iPad, a touch device is much more natural to use than a, than a laptop. It could be much more valid as a communications uh, aid. So there's going to be a point, uh, there's certain circumstances where it, it'll require it, but at, at, you know, not every two-year-old is going to be carrying around a, uh, a device uh, right. Uh, right. or a, a cell-enabled cell device. Right. Um, I think a big reason kids are not going to be carrying around devices at a young age is because they just lose things, right? Yeah. So, you know, oh, you lost your kitty cat at school. Do you remember where you left him? No, he was somewhere. You lost your $500 device. <laughs> where did you put it? No. But if it ends up being a throwaway, uh, yeah. you know, some of these devices, uh, you know, you can get a BlackBerry now for $25, or you can get, you know, certain devices mm -hmm. for, for no money down. So is that, uh, price will have a factor in this, obviously. Price will have a factor, yeah. Um, I doubt teachers will allow them in, in classrooms <laughs> early on. In JK and... In JK, and uh, but kids play with computers from a young age. And, and if they've got something that's sort of their own, that they can call their own, it's, it's still up to parents to, to make sure they don't spend all their time uh, playing with the devices. Um, do you think that the long-term implications of this will have an impact on how people or how children learn in the classroom? Do you think that that's what we're seeing here? Yes. I think this is the tipping point. So where it, it changes from a, a system that we've had from, you know, as long as we can remember, where there's a teacher lecturing, you know, at a blackboard to a bunch of kids, to uh, kids who can, who can interact on their own and learn things on their own and at their own speed, you know, be it faster than the normal speed or if they need to be slower in, in certain areas. I think we're going to look back and we're going to say at the point where we could give every single kid um, a device with mm -hmm. software um, that helps them learn. We're going to look back and say, yeah, this was this was a transformative moment in education. And this changed the last four or five hundred years of in-classroom learning. And this changed the whole system that's been handed down from uh, generation to generation. generation to generation for centuries. I think this is this could be the moment that changes all that. Well, Anthony, thank you so much for enlightening us on uh, the you know how mobile impacts early childhood development. Thanks, Rob. <laughs>